Hello, I am Bentham and welcome back to Cosmeteer, where in the previous episode we were working our way through the professional sectors with a ship that can now very much deal with anything that those sectors throw at it. We're getting towards the point where we can progress to the next uh, stage, but I want to be a little bit more prepared first. The main thing I would like to do is build a second ship. I think having two ships gives you quite a big advantage and it would be nice to have that before we... Uh, jump up to ships twice the size that we've been fighting so far, if not more. It's a fairly decent jump each time, I think. Um, I don't know exactly what to expect yet. I imagine that we're probably on par with what we'll see, but that's not good enough. You need to be better so that you don't get blown up as much as the enemy gets blown up in each fight. But anyway, uh, we've done all the upgrading we want to do, particularly with this one. Uh, what we want to do for now is build up a little bit of money so that we can build the second ship. So let us jump on to another professional sector. Also, what's the name of the next kind? Veteran is the next stage, but let's jump to this place first. Nice and nearby, and just harvest money at this particular stage. I think our ship can easily deal with anything that these sectors throw at it, so... It's just a case of not being dumb, and, uh... Hopping from one to the other. I mean, we could probably even at this stage survive fighting two of them at once if, uh, if it comes to that. Anyway, let's, uh, waste no time. At this point, we know the drill with this stuff. It's another iron frigate. Should be fine. We've got plenty of shielding on the front. Missiles going in at the start. Whoops. Left it behind. The engines are being torn to pieces. We're doing a terrible job of actually hitting them with these missiles. They just keep spinning around. Oh, there we go. We just knocked out something important. And it's just flailing about now, not really able to do much. It's literally just... It was just a reactor and a gun, and it was still trying to fire. I can't, uh, I can't fault its dedication to the cause. I mean, what else could it do, apart from desperately try and somehow land a hit on me? And on we go. Still not seeing the, uh, the Electrobot guy. That'd be a nice uh, way to finish these, if we encounter one of those. The Phalanx Light Escort. What is this about? Cannons is what it's about. And it won't be about them for very long. We are battering it quite easily. Oh, wow, that was... We, we really managed to sneak in there. I didn't, don't even know how we managed to specifically get the reactor. I guess we just hit it with enough force that we went through a bunch of corridor and stuff to get to it. On we go. Oh, this guy's ended up nearer. Let's fight him first, then. They're a little bit close to each other, these guys. We might end up fighting both at once. It is definitely possible. The Swift Wing. This one has some uh, Electro Bolts. What are we looking at? It Its shield is not active. Uh, sure. Seems a bit dumb. We'll just batter it and go straight for the reactor, I think. Through the shields, if necessary. And the shield is gone before it could even activate, so that was a bit naff. And it's sorted. There's still ships with a single reactor at this stage, which is a bit crazy. But it does seem like the AI ships are a lot more... Um, they hold back a lot more in terms of power and put more money into everything else. This one's that Diddy one we fought before. Nothing much to it. Easily enough dealt with. If we can actually hit the reactor and not every other bit of the ship first. There it goes. Oh, we took some damage that time. What to? Not to here. What happened? Were we too close when it exploded? Who knows, that might have been a previous fight, I wasn't paying attention to whether we were taking damage, because I assumed that any damage we took would not be particularly terrifying for us. So there we go, we've doubled our money. We can now make a ship half the size of this one. At that point, maybe we can start to build the ship in question. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to buy a ship. This will be... I mean, I'll just buy... The, another model one and then just tear the whole thing down and rebuild it from the start so that's the wrong button back to this i want to go into this and seeing as i'm in blueprint mode it's easy enough to just delete everything and go from there there we go right and this is the middle line now okay so what i'm thinking is that this is based around ion beams so immediately going to have some twin ion beams at the front i'd like to expand it to four eventually but that's probably stretching it to try and get to that right now, so we'll get back to it. And in the meantime, we'll have a bit of corridor here to represent the, the space that we'll put that into. And then I'm thinking some shields are a good start to help protect the, uh, the things. Basically, there's a particular design in the, uh, 
in the the standard ships that the game provides, and we'll end up encountering them, I think, at the, the highest difficulty level. Um, there's this particular one, I showed it briefly at the start of the first episode when I was showing off the larger scale ship battles. It's called the Cerberus, and it is awesome. It seems to be the best ship in the selection, and the whole, the idea behind it is that you've got massive ion beams, and then the way to stop the, the vulnerability of like easily getting through to them and blowing them up and then blowing up the generators that have to be right behind to keep them working, it has these big columns sticking out with just endless stacks of shields going forward. And because these beams fire straight forward, you don't have to worry about blocking the shots. You just fill up the sides as much as you like with defences. You can have this at the back of the ship if you like. There's another, I think we saw a design that was like that. Oh, we saw a design where they had that with shields. But yeah, you can just sink this as far back into the ship as you like and just have as many tiers of shields as you can afford in front of it so that the beams can just happily destroy whatever they face and it's a nightmare for the enemy to do anything about it. That is my thinking. The Cerberus has two uh, banks of these. I'm just going to go for one central one because that seems good enough to me. So that's what I'm going for, basically. I think that's a, a fantastic design and I want it because it's a brilliant idea to just have endless tiers of shields going up, as many as you can cram in. Of course, you've got to worry about getting power to them, so the columns on the, the sides have to have uh, enough room in them for some power and things like that. And you probably want shields on the other side to help protect the columns and so on. But you can just do the whole thing step by step. So let's fill this with corridors for the moment, and then we will have a whole bunch of... Well, we'll put the, the power storage right behind them, actually, because we can do that. And then some generators a little bit further back. So far, that's basically none of our fun, so that's fine. Uh, and I'm leaving space for future stuff here. Basically, there's just going to be an empty column here that I'll uh, fill in later with all the gubbins. So then, perhaps behind that we can have the, the control room or something. I don't know, I'd like to have redundancy with my control room, so have them on like either side like this or something. But away from the gen from the 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 power maybe. I mean the control rooms don't need to be in the middle of stuff. They can just be miles away in and somewhere where they won't cause you any trouble, which is wonderful. So we'll actually just put some crew quarters right behind these because that'll uh help people respond quickly to the needs of the uh of the ion cannons. Do that, and uh, another door there. We'll have make sure that the doors line up nicely with the uh, the power storage. Uh, what else to be doing? Because we can just set up a bare bones thing for the moment that does the the basic stuff. So let's just stick some thrusters at the back around here for the moment. Plenty of them. Uh, some facing. Forward. It's always awkward how you do those because you always want your, the front of the ship to be full of shields and weapons and stuff and you don't want to waste any um, space on forward facing engines but then you can't have them at the back because then they'll get in the way of expanding the front more. It's always awkward. One tactic that I have seen ships use is to just have a big open space in the center of the ship and then engines pointing into that space so you don't have any outward facing engines which is a, quite a hilarious idea. Making use of the fact that uh, the the ship does not block the thrusters. As long as this space is empty, you're good. So you can just build more thrusters here facing this way, more here facing... Maybe I'll do that. I, I could actually just do that at the back here, because I was thinking I don't want to do it because I'll have all the, the power stuff here, but I could totally just set it up all back here instead. Like, just have... You can't have them quite like that. Yeah, that stops you building them properly. So instead you could do this. Uh, or not. Oh, because this isn't connected, and for some reason it's now calling these engines the master components of the ship. Sure. Um, so yeah, we can do something like this. And just have this be in the middle of the ship. Out of the way of everything else. Armor all on the outside. And that's hilarious, so... I'm inclined to do that. So it's had our problems with, uh, with thrusters being in, in the way of stuff. Thing is, I don't know if it matters whether you have, like, thrusters here as well facing out, so that you've got, like, the... Because the, they need to be far away from the center of mass to turn properly. I don't know whether the ships have that as part of how they work or not. I've never particularly noticed it being that way. Yeah, what we can do is stick a couple of, maybe, power storages back here. 
Maybe not reactors, just because it'd leave the, the back of the ship vulnerable. We can put these here, a couple of reactors here. And then armor all along the back. And plenty of it. Something like that looks pretty neat. Whoops, there. And then a bit of corridor along the back here, maybe to help people move around easier. So actually we'll expand this armor a little bit, just so there's some more coverage on the corners. And we can just do this. We've just got all our engines in a nice convenient box, away from danger. Which is awesome. Right. Now to work on these front bits, I think. How's the money doing? Ah, we've gone over. Ah, damn it. We don't need as many engines right now. This thing doesn't have much to it. So maybe I'll actually just <laughs> delete all this for now and come back to it. Yeah. I want to be able to put more money into the weaponry for the moment. We'll get back to the engine stuff when we have... Uh, when we have the money to do something wacky like that. But that is definitely... I'm considering it as things stand. But yeah, we can do that for the moment and it, it works fine. Uh, then... It's the case of maybe we want to do more about the shielding here. Also, we don't have enough power right now. We've just got the power for this front stuff and not really for the engines. So I think we can just, like, if we move this stuff down a bit, then we can... Uh, maybe just to make it look a bit nicer, I'll do something like this, and then... I can at least have a bit more of a corner here. Still looks a bit silly, but... Not as silly. I never like doing it like that. We'll do this and then this. No, we'll, we'll do it more pointy. Help to defend the corridors that I always forget to put proper armor on. Uh, we need FTL. So where are those? Here. I think we... A one is not enough. So yeah, we'll have two then. Two like that. A couple of control rooms as well. At the moment it looks silly, but I don't know. Later on I'll move it about a bit more. Uh, we still need more reactors, forgot about that. Made room and then filled it with other things, so I guess I'll make more room. Let's do it that far out, and then we can put... ...reactors... ...here, right next to the... Ah, oh, that's too much, but we can just have the one and it still meets the demands. Now it's just uh, a need for a little bit more in the way of crew, so this, of course, crew are very expensive. We can just hire a couple less than the... Uh, than what we have capacity for. There we go. So we have thrusters, we have weaponry. Only this at the moment, which is not brilliant, but it's a start and we'll do more with that later. Let's see. Fire extinguishers, we'll need those. So here. And we'll just plonk them in these corners for now. Oh, we don't really, we don't have the money for that. Can we get rid of some armor then? Yeah, that'll do. We'll go without the armor for the moment. This shouldn't be getting shot at, hopefully. Hopefully it'll just be the other ship, because this one's less of a threat, so they won't care about it. Then we'll do more killing, we'll get more money, and we'll upgrade this a bit more. So yeah, we've got the fire extinguishers. I don't think there's anything else vital that is required. We could do some backup weaponry other than this stuff. But that is outside of our price range at the moment. We could make it inside our price range by not by uh, reducing the number of crew we hire, but let's not go down that route. That's a bad idea, I think. Can we put a bit of armor on stuff? Like here, maybe? We could afford that. We can't afford, like, anything else. We've got 240 left. Yeah, we can't afford anything. So there we go. It's a ship. It's functional. It, it's... whoops. Need to actually make it so. There we go, it's functional, it's not brilliant, but later on it will be a lot better at its job. We'll give everyone a moment to get things powered up. I didn't have a proper look of over of all the doors, so some of those are dumb, but the important stuff at the front is, uh, is set up right, so I think we'll get away with that for the moment. It's taken a while to power everything up. We could have a little bit more in the way of power at the front here, really, but uh, once the storage is full, it should allow it to uh, to function fairly well in fights. And there we go, we have our two ships, and they're both called Model 1, so please uh, come up with some name suggestions so I can differentiate them and uh, 
be able to quickly identify one relative to the other. And now let us jump. So we'll go to another professional sector for now until this uh, new ship has its training wheels taken off. Bit of a jump, but we've got plenty of fuel for it. We've got over a thousand fuel now. I mean, we won't in a second, but we'll end up back at over a thousand again, I think. So that'll be fine. Oh wow, every single crew member on the ship was focused on charging the FTL drive for a second there. And they didn't finish. What are they doing now? Oh, they're, they're filling up the storage again? And then they're emptying the storage again. Just go from the reactors to the FTL drive. That reactor there's not even being used. What? These guys are dumb. Just charge it already. There we go. And jump. And here we are. Four enemies to face. Let us go for the first one. And we can compare... Ah, so it's doing the... Um, it's got this system of having, uh, what do you call it, formations. It's a little bit weird because the ships refuse to move until they are in exactly the right formation. And if it breaks, they slow right down. So it's a bit weird. I would say it's not really perfect. Also, it just decides on the formation based on how the ship is positioned at the time. Really, I want this guy to be hanging back a bit. Staying, uh, letting the, the, the big boys take the, the damage. Letting his big brother to, uh, take the punches so that he can just sit at the side and um, provide backup, i.e. stand there watching the other guy do the work. I think I've got the rotation wrong now, which means they're going to fly super slow the whole time because this guy's constantly trying to reposition and stay pointing straight, so I've, I've messed it up. I can actually just set up a... there we go, standard formation that resets it. But the ship is here. It is the spread wing. Have we seen this one before? Maybe. Two big cannons on the side, stupid positioning because you can't fire both at once, I don't think. But we have arrived. Now I'm just going to tell them to separately attack it so that he'll actually face. And there he goes firing the beams. Uh, what is this guy doing? Oh, a couple of missiles flying all over the place over here. Oh, he was turning to point that cannon. Which just left him open to being attacked from all sides and murdered horribly. So yeah, nice bit of teamwork. I don't know how much he contributed, but it definitely helped. And off you go to this guy over here. But yeah, whatever position they're in at the time that you give the order, they decide that that's their formation. It's a bit weird. I prefer if you could just select them both and tell them both to go fight the enemy. So I'll try that, but this guy might get there first, which will not be good for him. I see it seems like they're, they're keeping uh, time with each other. That's working okay. Oh, the new guy's pulling ahead a little bit, so he might end up... Uh, Getting into a fight a bit sooner than he likes, but I've just noticed we can finish hiring our crew now. We've made the money for it. The guy is coming at us very fast. And the enemy is... It's the Falcon! So... Hang on, which one have I got selected? I need to go out of this menu, I think. Whoops, that's not the menu. There we go. So I'm selecting you. I want you to target the reactor. If I can? Why can't I specifically tell you to do that? I can tell you what positioning to have, and I don't want you to be that close, that's bad. Stay nice and far back, but target that. Why won't you let me target you? I am confused. Okay then, I guess just get in and fire. Whoop, why? Don't, don't show him the side of you. There's, that's a weak point. That's dumb. I think you need more reverse thrusters. Oh, we've ended up flanking him. Look at this. This is the good use of having two ships. Because look at that, he's burrowing straight through to the reactor, except now he's turned to point his reactor at the main ship, so sure, that's clever. That's him done, and both of you, let's send you first so that you'll end up arriving at roughly the same time, hopefully. Yeah, the cool thing will be that at some point, once this guy's uh, running a little bit better, We'll actually be able to deal with uh, multiple ships at once by just sending the two ships we have off in different directions to go deal with their own particular targets. What are we facing? It's the Falling Star. Nothing much to it. Should be fine. Let's see how our guys go. Straight in with the missiles. That's all good. You're not doing anything. Okay, so ah, because I've given I've given him the engage distance of really far away, so he's slowing down before he reaches that, so it takes a while for him to actually get in beam range. So we'll tell him to go a little bit closer this time, and that should be better. Running low on ammo there. 
So I think you really do blast through your ammo. I don't know what, like, what a good ratio is to have for uh, ammo to ammo factories, really. To make sure that the, the cannons are running as, as much as possible. I guess it's always the case that it'll run through its supply at some point, so... It's how much of the fight you want it to survive. And here we are against an Ion Frigate. Our own Ion Frigate is doing a terrible job of getting into the fight. Is he going to manage to get some... Yeah, he's, he's starting to fire. He's helping. And he's the one that took out the reactor there, so well done him. Right, now we can do a little bit more upgrading. Not got a huge amount more money yet, but uh, we can flesh things out a bit. So maybe adding some more reactors in for the moment. Oops. Uh, maybe starting to expand out this area here. I would like to start on this, just so we've got some extra defense. We can start having multiple layers of shields and stuff like that. That will become very awesome, hopefully. So for the moment, I'm just going to... Actually, I'll move this to, like, there. And then we can start having corridor running up through here. And our end goal is to have another shield in this position here. But then being able to feed that shield is difficult. Gotta have some room for, a, like, a reactor once. Because the, the longer it gets, the more you have to have its own dedicated... Uh, power system to keep it all working. So you don't want to have it like this, you want to have it more like this so there's a bit of space in the middle to have the uh, the power stuff. So yeah, having it a uh, too wide space still leaves lots of overlap between the, the shields so they're nearly protecting each other. The, the, they've got double protection on the center of the uh, of the thing which is basically the weak point of the ship and that if the enemy can start to blast through that then they can start to uh, to knock out the whole thing by getting to the reactors, blowing up the column from the inside, and only then can they actually start to attack these. They've got to cause catastrophic damage to the rest of the ship before they can do that. But we're not at that stage yet, so not, let's not uh, get ahead of ourselves. We'll leave that out for the moment, which means we don't have the reactors yet, because that will be doom, but we can put in our power storage and that will be okay. So just putting some right here, maybe. For the moment, this first one can be powered by these, but the second one can have its own dedicated system here. We'll put a bit of armor around it for the moment, because it is still expensive and maybe explodes a bit. I'm not really sure. I forget if it can do that. You know what, though? We'll put some corridor in front, and what we can do is have, say, some point defense on the front here. Just because missiles could uh, give it a run for its money if they get around the shields and stuff like that. And then we'll just put a bit of armor around here. And yeah, eventually we'll flesh this out a lot more. Basically, I'm rushing to get this cool part done, because that's awesome. Right, uh... Need more power, need more crew. So now I think what we'll do is we'll put the extra pair of reactors here. As opposed to putting one over there quite yet. We'll save that till this is uh, more fleshed out. Gone through half of our money so far. We want to move this engine somewhere else, really, because it's awkward. We can actually just put it there, thinking about it. Make it part of that section. A bit more armor here, maybe. Just so there's some defense to it. That for now. So it's a little thin corridor running through here, but we can do more with that later. Uh, let's do that, I think. Probably best we can just put some armor there. We'll put it. We'll put a nice uh, sloped bit there. Looks a bit neater. Do that there as well, actually. So it I said it doesn't look great at all, but sure. I can I can do that with it. Also, doesn't look great. Damn it! So hard to make things look nice, and also be really functional. Stick with that then. Uh, what else? We're good in terms of engines. Lots of defense now on the front. Some side-facing shields will be nice as well. But we're getting a bit low on money for that sort of thing. We, I mean, we can't afford it. It's a couple here. The problem is getting them to cover... Well, actually, at some point we'll have shields here, won't we? So we'll have, like, a line that goes up to here. So a shield here will be perfect. That would cover everything eventually when we have all the shields in place. There's going to be more corridor running through here, so it wouldn't be perfect. If we had it there, it would fit. That would fit the idea of what I was going for. Something like this, and then having the thrusters a little bit 
further down here. Oh, but then I was going to have a... No, we'll put the, the thrusters there. The thing is that there's a lot of planning for the future with this particular one, whereas with the previous ship, I was just building it as I went and expanding it as I it became possible. With this one, it's entirely the opposite, and I'm, uh... I'm... I've got a bigger ship in my mind, and I'm trying to build that piece by piece and make it work in the meantime. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, really, but it, it saves a little bit of money because less stuff moves around. With the other ship, I was constantly moving everything as I built, whereas with this one, some of the stuff is going to stay in the same place forever, potentially. I just remembered something awkward about this. You can't quite have... Cause you can't have shields like this because they're, like, the... The bits sticking out the front overlap, and that counts. So this would have to be sunk in by a square, and we just have to deal with that. We'll do the same with the engine then, because that, that'll that also be the, the same boat. And let's put a bit of crew in the front here, so because there's a lot of different things that need people manning them now. So let's make sure that we can... Uh, we have the people nearby to, to get to their stations and things like that. That looks neat. So this is sort of sunk into the into the de uh, design a bit. And then we'll put a little bit here as well, just for some uh, some defense on the side. We need more crew, definitely. We Yeah, we got rid of two over here, and we put two back in there, so overall we're... Uh, we've added a bunch of stuff and not added the people to man the stuff. For the moment, we can put them there. And that'll make it fantastic for uh, keeping everything being manned for the moment. Later on we'll put the beams there, but for the moment it's a perfect place for it to be. Anything else we need? Could put some more point defense on the side, because there will be missiles that get round the side of us. And which is point defense? It's, uh... We can afford... Oh, we can't quite afford four of them, which is what I was thinking. We can afford two at least. Stick them on the side somewhere. Just behind here, and yeah, we... Oh no, we can afford uh, another pair of them. Oh, but can we... Can, yeah, we can't afford the corridors leading up to them, unfortunately. Puts us slightly over it, so I'll fix that by removing a bit of armor somewhere. This here, for the moment, was not enough. We need another tiny amount, really. This here as well. Now we can afford it. So we can have that corridor there. That's in a silly place now, but I'm scared about moving it because it'll cost us more money. I mean, I can actually just check. Does that still work? It does still work. So we'll put it down there instead. A little bit of a weak point here. People could potentially blast through to there, but hopefully that won't happen. We'll just keep facing them and hopefully we're maneuverable enough for that. Probably need a few more reverse thrusters and things like that so we can say the, the optimal range. This thing needs to be maneuverable because it needs to stay pointing directly at the enemy or it doesn't do anything. Is something to bear in mind. We'll consider that next time. We've run out of money this time around, so we'll make that so. Let them get that all uh, set up. The bridges are already running because we didn't move them around, so we can in the meantime plot the course to the final professional sector for the moment. I think after this one is when we will try jumping up to the veteran sectors. I think we'll about be at that level by that time. Let's speed up time up a little bit so that this guy can get charged because these guys are terrible for charging those things. They seem to have weird priorities about where they get their power from. So they're just milling about not achieving anything and then finally it's all ready and so off we go. What's this place called? Alarans. That's the most normal name we've seen so far. Let's go for this guy over here, and I'm just going to tell them to fly to it separately because it's easier and looks less silly. And then we'll just follow the ships as they go. This guy's now very slow, isn't he? Because we added a bunch of mass and no extra engines, so he's going to arrive a little bit late. Admittedly. One thing I'd like to try, though. You stop. Stop here and let the other ship go ahead. I want to see how it fares. It should be fine because... Oh, wow, yeah, this, thing, this thing needs more reverse thrusters. It is just not stopping. But yeah, I want to... Well, in the end, they're going to both be fighting. Oh, that's not how I wanted it to go. Don't turn around. I'm going to shoot you in the back. But it's okay because our new ship will come in to save the day. Uh-oh. This could actually go quite badly. These things can burrow through 
crappy stuff like crew quarters and things fairly quickly. Please, please turn around. I can't order you to... Oh, there we go. I can just order you to go there. Wait, no, just go there. Rotate, please. Do not be of the stupid. There we go. This guy's coming in. He's doing the damage. He's burrowing through a little bit slowly. So, yeah, maybe he needs a bit more offensive capability generally. The guy's just trying to leave now, apparently. There we go, we've taken him apart. Come on, get after him. The other guy's gonna get to him first. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I think he's alright. Maybe not... He couldn't take one of these ships himself without the potential for death at this stage, I'd say. But with a little bit more work, adding in some extra... Oh, well, apparently I selected something other than my two ships there for a second. It's a Triraptor, this should be fine. We've just gone and crashed into him. Yeah, okay, reverse thrusters, we do need more of those. I'm definitely seeing that. But there we go. You set off first, because you're slower. And then you as well, with a bit of a delay. Ooh, took a bit of damage there, it looks like there was some hits on the side. Oh, was that from the beam though, earlier? That was probably that, wasn't it? I sort of forgot to do the repairs earlier. Here we go, so we set off first, so he's ended up a little bit ahead, but then he's going to slowly be caught up with. But also, the guy's swinging around that way, so works fairly well. Oh, what are you doing? Calm down. Suddenly kicking off to the side, might be because one of the thrusters went out of power for a second there, and it's like, actually, it's more efficient to fly sideways now. This is a stomper. Seen this before. We'll just sit here and batter it. Yeah, two beams not amazing, four will be better. It does slowly slice through though, it's getting to the reactor. There it goes. So having a mix of the weapons is best. I think we've uh, we've seen that. And one more ship for the day. And let's actually follow our ships while we do it. It is a junker, so this is gonna be laughably easy, I should imagine. No needs any repairs. Fire a couple of missiles. Will they knock it out instantly like last time? Nope, but uh, shouldn't take long at all for it to go down. Just the reactor, and it's gone. Piece of cake. Anyone take any damage? Nope, everyone is fine. We're doing great. So, next episode, I think, we'll give it a shot. We'll do a bit of upgrading to this guy, just to make sure he's ready and has enough defense, and maybe we'll add in the extra ion cannons. Then we'll jump to veteran and see how we fare with our little fleet of, uh, of two ships. And uh, now that we have two ships, come up with some name suggestions for both of them so I can uh, differentiate them. And It's something characteristic, something about how it kills the enemy is, uh, I think, a nice way of doing it. But yeah, whatever is cool, I'll end up choosing. And so with that, I shall say goodbye, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.